culture shock. I'm Chow and I have lived in Singapore for my entire life. And I am Zane and I have also lived in Singapore for my entire life. And culture shock is where we gather people from different nationalities from all around the world and we compare their experiences at home versus in Singapore. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about education. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm, I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. How kidding, can you do that? Kidding, kidding, kidding. Okay. I mean, I feel like Singapore's education is something that is very structured. Yep. Everyone has this common experience of going through a certain rigid system. As much as there's a lot of criticism about it, there's also a lot of good that comes out of it. Yeah, I think me and Chao, we come from a point whereby like, we don't represent the majority of Singaporeans because our pathways are pretty similar. Secondary school and then we went to a junior college and then we went to university. Mm. So both of us are, were from uh, National University of Singapore. And from there, then that's when we move forward with our careers. Lah. So today we have a couple of guests here with us today to tell us more about what education is like on the other parts of the world. Yes. yes. And let's start from the furthest country. Hi, my name is Dominic and I'm from Germany. And how long have you been in Singapore for? Oh, eight years. Eight years. Okay. So my name is Hannah and um, I'm from Philippines and I've been in Singapore for 10 years. My name is Stephanie. I'm from Malaysia, your neighbor. I've been here for seven months. Okay, hi, <laughs> I'm Devon. I'm from South Africa. I've been in Singapore for four years and I teach. Mm. Oh, you teach? I teach. Okay, we got the perfect person <laughs> joining us today, huh? Exactly. Mm. All about education. Well, for a start, how long is your education journey in each of your countries? Mm. In Singapore, we, start, we stay in school for about 12 years before we come out to work. Yeah. It could be a little bit longer or a little bit less depending on which route you choose. Yeah. So when we go to school, um, excluding pri pre-primary, which is like nursery school, mm -hmm. so grade one, which is when you're seven years old, to okay. 12, so it's also 12 years. Primary school is grade one to seven, and then you go to high school, which is grade eight to 12. So it's about the same, like, it's like secondary school, I guess. Mm. So right. I think our JC is part of our high school. What is the qualification you leave with after grade 12? So it's, so it's a South African senior, national senior certificate, which is similar to the UK's AS level. Oh, oh so it's like a high school set. Yeah, it's like a diploma, I think. Grade 12 is the equivalent of like you finishing high school. Correct, yes. yes. Ah. It's college university. Because oh. I don't say college. Oh, yes, okay. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. 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 So university. after grade 12, you go into university. Okay. Yeah, mm. correct. Do people usually study university in South Africa? Yes, most people go to university after they have finished high school. And what's it like for you in Malaysia? So we have standard 1 to standard 6. So there'll be 6 years of primary school. And then there'll be secondary from 1 to form 5. So around 17, so 18, you will go to college and then university after that. But it really depends though, sometimes you can go to diploma. Diploma is about 3 years and then university. So I think about 11, 12 years? About the same. Oh, it's the same lah basically. And how about in Philippines? So in Philippines, we start from grade 1 to grade 6 in elementary. First year to fourth year in high school. And then go to college for basically around four years you can decide to go further if you want but usually filipinos would just take the diploma and after that they go to work okay okay how about in germany in germany usually okay let's start in the beginning you go to kindergarten for two years uh, then afterwards you go to elementary school that is another four years after elementary school let's say you go to high school so i think also overall 12 years after you finished high school and then in Germany at least during my time uh, there, there are two different models I would say either you continue with university to specialize on, on certain things or you start directly a job and then you get uh, trained on the job so it depends on what you want to do then you still go three years to, to a very specific school who teaches you all about that job including university for university you need maybe another four or five years I never went to university so so I, I, I don't really know but I think that is Give and take it. So, so on that note, like, do do parents in Germany like they like they focus a lot on the education in terms of oh you have to go to university like how it's like in Singapore or is it like kind of like 50 50? Uh, I would say more 50 50. Really depends on on your parents as well. So I, I think it depends on on 
on your parents um, what they want uh, maybe it depends on also what kind of job they have so maybe they want their kids to have similar career paths so those might be a little bit more under pressure so for me i think my parents were just happy that i passed school you know so <laughs> Well, I think this comes from a place where in Singapore there's a general expectations that parents have for their children to really excel in school or to make it into a university. And I feel like as a country, also because it's smaller, there is this common experience of feeling that pressure. Is there any convention that people steer towards and expectations? South Africa, I didn't ever feel academic pressure and I don't remember any of my friends ever complaining about their parents putting a lot of pressure on them to perform academically. It was to perform in sports. Oh. So there was a lot of pressure on the kids to be in the first rugby team or the first cricket team or the first netball team or the first hockey team or the best athlete. So there was a lot of sports pressure more so than academic pressure. It's so different. Yeah, no, so many young boys, even today, like they want to be in the rugby academy. And I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> like now as a teacher, but you know, they do what they want to do. I don't know. It's, I don't have kids yet, so it's weird. I don't know how to put pressure, but I don't remember any academic pressure. In Malaysia, it really depends. Like my parents, they're pretty chill with my whole education, but um, compulsory is like, we need to go to university lah. Oh, yeah. compulsory. As in, as in, like, you must go to university. Your even, parents told you. Yeah, so. even my friends' parents as well. Yeah, yeah that's the benchmark, la, I would say. So it's something that generally Malaysian parents would want their children to yeah. excel. Excel. And achieve. Yeah, even for me, right, to be very honest, um, I did this comm. It's not really what I wanted. I wanted to do, like, mass comm and stuff. I was really doing it for my parents. So, so as in, would you say that the pressure is, like, kind of similar to Singapore than, like, I would say it's not as bad. Not as bad. Why? Like, when I moved to Singapore, I feel like even my relatives, my cousins, my little cousins and all, even from a young age, they're like constantly studying. Mm. But for us, it's like, yeah, you need to study, but it's not like compulsory, compulsory kind of thing. There's a, a bit of difference. La. I would say same, same, but different. You know? In the Philippines, it's quite a big deal to finish college. Right. And, you know, parents would usually say, you know, when they're in a dramatic mode, they would say that, you know, when you finish your college, it's the only thing we could give you, like the education, all this. Just, it's like their life uh, success. It's a definition of success for parents. Is it stressful to study in the Philippines? I would say just like in any other things, it's a case-to-case -case basis. Like, for example, it depends on the family's expectation. Like for, for myself, my mom would always say, just have the minimum, you know? So in Philippines, the passing grade that time was 75. So as long as I have 75, my mom is happy about that. But for some families, you cannot have line of seven or line of eight, you know? So they have some kind of pressure to really perform in, in school. So your pass rate in Philippines is 75%. Yeah. That's so high. Yeah. That's I think low. South Africa is like 35%. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> Standards high, guys. <laughs> Isn't it 50? Yeah, 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 it should be at least 50. Yeah. Yeah. You would think, no, ours is much lower. Okay. When I was in school, it was 40%. So if you got like, yeah, 41, you were happy. <laughs> no, it's like 75 passing grade is like our A1 yeah. in in really? secondary Second school. Yeah. yeah, it's like to get an A1. Well, I'm very curious to know the difference in curriculum between the schools and, yeah. this, and whether or not that makes a difference. When Before you moved to Singapore, what do you hear about the education system here? Probably it's a different perspective for me because I moved here to study in the very first time. Uh, I had to take up some courses to qualify me to teach a certain course. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was quite intense because I was an assistant teacher and I was a student at night. So I could, I could already feel that it wouldn't be like that in Philippines, definitely. What about your own experience studying in Singapore? Was it stressful for you? Yes. You know, after you finish your primary school, which is like your primary school leaving exam, so every parent that I met and that I know is like they would want their child to do well in their PSLE because that's kind of like the first gateway to 
a good school and then after you get into a good secondary school that will increase your chances to get into a good junior college and eventually to university so it's like a lot of parents are putting a lot of pressure on primary school students because they would want them to end up in a good school they actually feel a lot of pressure from their parents which is why i feel like there was an increase or rather an alarming rate of students in primary six having a lot of like mental um, pressure and I felt that pressure as a kid too so that was an immense pressure for me but then once they saw what stress that they put me under for my brother like they were pretty chill about it okay you know what just oh. just find your path and even if you don't do so well it is fine you are the test subject exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> and child. and it was crazy because it's like I do know for a fact that like right. from four subjects to 13 to me there's like a big jump which I had a lot of like, a really hard time adjusting to so I'm not sure if like other countries you guys have different subjects as well because at the age of 13 you are introduced 13 subjects <laughs> in your education I think in Singapore the, the way the system is built is that each exam is very consequential to the student's life and therefore it seems like a make or break moment if you don't do well in that exam it can really have a domino effect for the rest of your life oh. and that's how that's how it's commonly viewed in Singapore that's oh. why there's a pressure wait do you guys have that as well in your yeah, home countries we had four compulsory subjects English Afrikaans which is my mother tongue mm -hmm. maths and life orientation and if you failed one of these then you failed your grade oh and then you had your three additional subjects that you could choose between like history biology Science. We don't call it physical education. We call it life orientation. Ooh. Life orientation. Life orientation exam. Oh, that sounds like what? something everyone needs. <laughs> but no, but does it actually like prepare you for anything in life? No. How does it work? Yeah, like what kind of questions? It was a lot of like, no, it was silly stuff. Like uh, some of it was sex education, and then some of it was like make a magazine like very pointless things that i was like <laughs> why am i not be, teach me how to make how to like change a tire how my to do taxes. your taxes <laughs> yeah like, life oriented you have to pass it to you have to pass it i mean it was pretty easy life. <laughs> <laughs> for us we have at least seven seven subjects in elementary for example they're failing in other subjects to pull up their grades they will really do well in PE and they have this in the final exams of schools there's also a final exam for PE so for example it, it's it's either a written exam or a you know like practical exam for example if we learned about uh, say football in that term or in that uh, period then there will be like a, an actual football game and your grade will depend on how well do you will do there. Oh, it's so yeah, stressful. Yeah. It is. Are you stressed it is already? Great. Yeah. Oh but it's gosh. fun. Yeah. So do you also have it in uh, Malaysia? Yeah, but I don't think it's compulsory. Oh, it's not. Yeah, that's why we all feel it. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How about in Germany? Uh, I would say it's it's all all the time the same. So you would have three major subjects: uh, German, English, and math. Those. The only one of them you can fail. In Germany, you have a grading system from in numbers from 1 to 6, where 1 is an A and 6 is an F. Mm. So basically, you can have uh, maybe, I think, one F in the, or a 5 in, in one of the major classes, but the others uh, you need to pass. So, and then you have several other uh, subjects, biology, chemistry, and, and things like that. Okay. I don't know about you, yeah. but for me growing up in Singapore, I felt a lot of pressure to go into very standard uh, areas of study after JC. I think people wanted me to go into elite schools and then after that further my study and do like law or something mm. like that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And if I didn't get into those schools or into those fields of study, then I wouldn't be considered successful. I think for me it was very much the same mm -hmm. because I think like uh, growing up there is a lot of like segregation between oh these are the elite schools or oh, this girl schools are the best this top five boys schools in Singapore and then there is this categorization oh they are neighborhood schools mm -hmm. right because of such se like um, segregation right it kind of makes parents want their kids to go to these top schools yeah which 
unintentionally it makes the neighborhood schools don't look very good. I have a question. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just about what you were talking about. So you're saying that there's so much pressure in um, like to do well with your PSLE to get into the best high schools. Yeah. Okay. So from all of these high schools, that some of them are better than others, but. Do these students from all of these different high schools go to the same university? So like, can you go? Can you get into NUS if you are not in one of the best high schools? Yeah, for sure. So then, what does it matter which high school you go to? I think, I think it's because the end result will still be university, right? There's a perception about the different environments in the different high schools. So generally, people believe that if you were to go to a better school, you get a better environment for you to study and therefore work your way up towards going into a local university. But I want to know like, how was the pressure like as a student in your home country? I don't ever remember being stressed about my academics. Wow. Oh yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't feel the same pressure that my students here feel. Mm. So I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Well, in school back in your home country, what would they consider success? Yeah. I mean, obviously there is also that label or stigma that that is attached to doing well academically and being in the top 10 um, of the grade, but no one really cared about that. Like, I mean, not that I'm like trying to give myself a pat on the back, but I feel like I, and a lot of my friends who live overseas now and who went to university and they worked hard, which is what Singaporeans do as well, mm -hmm. is to get that degree or that diploma or whatever. It does help you in the long term. How about in Malaysia? If I don't go to college, then I have to work out. But like, people will actually look down on me. Yeah, it's really different. Mm. Like the way people look at you when you do a diploma. Yeah, but in the end, I also went to university. Like it was a long route because I didn't really like to study. Mm. So actually, my plan was after diploma, then I start to work, right? But yeah. then um, I started like really working hard and really like to study after that. So I decided to continue university. So because of that long gap, right? People actually that you can tell from the way they talk to you and ask right. you things, right? So it's like people will actually look down on you if you only have a diploma. Yeah. But to be fair, right, I have friends who do diploma and they actually excel very, very well. Yeah, yeah. I definitely do. They're like managers now and things yeah. like that. Yeah. What about you? Do you have any experiences you want to share? Um, yeah, when it comes to like the definition of success, it's really the having the degree and the diploma, like finishing college, like reaching that graduation day and having a picture with your diploma, that's really a big deal. So it's it's quite a definition of success for, not just for us or for the student, but for the family. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say if you don't get a diploma, then then will people generally like... Definitely judge you. Oh. Yeah. In Germany? It's okay. So not so much pressure, uh, not like here in Singapore or in other Asian countries. Yeah. So yeah, just pass school. Uh, that is important, yeah, because afterwards, if you pass school, you can apply for certain jobs. So as higher the job, as, as better your education needs to be. Well, maybe it totally changed uh, in the past <laughs> eight years. Uh, would need to check with my relatives, but I think it's really, it's okay. It's quite interesting to see yeah. the different education experiences in Asian countries yeah. and non-Asian countries. I feel like there's a bit of difference there. Yeah. Quite obvious. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So teaching in an enrichment center really opens up our minds as well on what other enrichment classes kids go to on a weekend, okay? Saturday or Sunday, doesn't matter. But in a day, they would go for five, four to five enrichment classes. And I used to have uh, classes on a Friday night until 9 p.m. And then uh, a class the next day at 9 a.m. And then I would have kids, you know, because like really comes to class, with, you know, slouching and some of them really crying because they're so tired. So I really feel sorry for them. So it's quite also an additional pressure for the teachers to make it more fun so that they would still look forward to come to classes or else they will just really drag themselves and yeah. you know also the tuition will be wasted right yeah. do you guys have tuition in your countries like respective countries do you guys have yeah, that and do you still go for that i never <laughs> went <laughs> you never went yeah. But I guess only the ones who are really, really struggling. Yeah. For example, if you know that the student is really struggling with math, like failing it, mm -hmm. then you will be sent to a tuition. Right. In Singapore, the kids when they want to just study faster than whatever school was teaching them, they'd go to tuition. Yeah. And the tuition class would teach them chapters in advance. 
Yeah, that's true. I had I had classmates who would skip school because they wanted to use school time to study because they were doing it faster and they were doing it better. But in Malaysia, do you guys also go for tuition? And is it like a compass, like a like Mas, since yeah, yeah, like most of us, yeah. All is, is it? Okay. Oh, you have after to. school then at tuition. Sometimes Saturday also. Mm. Ah, then in Germany, do you guys have tuition as well, or is it? No. So no. if you if you fail a class, uh, as Hannah mentioned, you you would probably see seek someone for help, maybe a one on one for forty five minutes or something to to pass the class. I guess the price that Singaporeans pay for being number one on all the lists is a culture that is really a pressure cooker. Mm. And it was interesting to hear from all the different perspectives. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for watching this episode of Culture Shock. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can watch our other videos over there and don't forget to ring the notification bell right over here. Bye! Bye!